The Lakers and Celtics have been rivals for decades, practically since the birth of the NBA. Both being on opposite sides of the country and both having players that seem to perfectly counter each other like Larry Bird and Magic. So what if the legendary Black Mamba instead never went to sunny LA, California and instead went up north to frigid Boston? Would it mean more championships? Less? What would it mean for Shaq and even the league? This is a topic that has been pondered and wrote about, but with the Celtics recently winning the 2024 championship and so much hype around them, I think it's time to dive into this. First things first, the Celtics weren't the only ones that passed on Kobe. Kobe wasn't drafted until 13th in the draft. A massive reason for this is Kobe never went to college. Despite having good SAT scores, Kobe decided that he was ready to go to the league. Others were more hesitant though. There wasn't a good precedent set for people going straight to the league instead of attending college. Daryl Dawkins, for instance, averaged under 6 points per game the first two seasons he entered. And Kevin Garnett was a bit more on the fence, but that was due in large part to KG being 6'11". With Kobe being a guard, he didn't have the added height like Kevin Garnett to push him over the edge and potential for people's eyes. Instead, scouts and executives decided it was better to go with the perceived safer choices such as Ray Allen and Allen Iverson who had already quote unquote proven themselves in college basketball. Well, if 12 other teams passed on Kobe, why do so many people focus on just the Celtics? Well, several reasons. Kobe had an amazing pre-draft consideration for the Celtics. First of all, Kobe was an incredible prospect for the Celtics despite the hesitation from other teams to draft out of high school. During and after the workout, Kobe commented many times how surreal and amazing it was that the workout was being held by Dennis Johnson, and admiration was clearly shown for him. In these workouts, Kobe was incredible. Today, several people make MJ and Kobe comparisons, but would you believe the scouts were doing it even from day one? ESPN reports, ESPN reports that Celtics general manager Jan Volk said, if you closed your eyes and thought a little bit, you might have even thought that you were watching Michael Jordan. He did everything well, beyond well. He was exceptional in everything that he did. And then we commented, as I recall, on how reminiscent he was of Michael. Kobe was nothing short of exceptional hitting practically every shot given to him and several of the scouts took notice. Next came something less athletically focused however, the interview. But Kobe excelled at that too. Carr, the GM at the time, reported, He was the best interview that I've ever been a part of. Kobe knew the league as well as anyone. He knew the Celtics from a historical standpoint. He knew the Celtics probably better than most Celtics did at 17 years old. Kobe was already showing his basketball IQ and knowledge in the interview, with Carr continuing saying, Kobe traced the Celtics' history from Russell through Bird. He pointed out various aspects of each player's game and broke down moves that made them special. He referenced specific playoff series and numerous finals matchups. The Celtics' assistant coach, KC Jones, backed it up saying, He's a student of the game, he understands the game, and he's appreciative of that. Even at a young age, a bit of the Mamba mentality even came out in this interview, with ESPN stating, Volk described him as very poised and very well spoken during the session. Volk adds that Bryant was clearly mature beyond the expectations typical for a high school player, or anyone of that age. The Celtics were so enamored with him at that point that the interview lasted for an hour, about twice as long as their interviews with any other prospect. The scouts could see Kobe's mama mentality and eagerness for winning, stating, you knew there was a hunger to be in that mix. He knew all the, he knew what all those guys had done. He wanted to be one of those guys that would be talked about in the same breath. There was a hunger, no question there was a hunger. That same maturity and hunger came out even further when considering the Celtics. While many may point to the loyalty that Kobe had towards the Lakers, Kobe's desire to be a legend was even greater. The scouts state that deep down, Bryant was a die-hard Lakers fan, but the Celtics said they were not aware of that at the time. 
nor did Bryant relay that fact to them at any point. Carr said that Kobe did not give any of that away in the interview, and Volk continued saying, we had no reason to believe he wouldn't play for the Celtics or whatever team would draft him. With this what if being such a large topic, Kobe himself was even asked and pondered how he would have felt playing for the Celtics, and he responded saying that he would have shaken it off eventually. Quote, he knew that specific shade well from his youth, when he devoured VHS tapes of Lakers Celtics finals from the 1980s that his grandparents sent him when he was growing up in Italy. Just as Bryant grew up to love the Lakers, he came to loathe their bitter rival, an organization he considered an evil empire of sorts. Dude, it was the freakiest I've ever done, Bryant said shaking his head in near belief as he reflects. I don't know if it's the mythology of the Celtics green or whatever, but they bring out the practice gear and you open it up and the shorts are there and it's like the green glows. It's like a different kind of green. I'm looking at it like, do I really have to put this on? I'm comfortable wearing the stuff I have. But I quickly moved past that. It's like, I'm quickly about to become a professional. If anything, I understand the history of this franchise and the franchise has done a lot of amazing stuff. So I was quickly able to move by that. And when asked how he would perform if he ever was a Celtic, Kobe responded, I would have tried to carry on Bird's legacy. Bryant said, without hesitation, absolutely, I would have done a tremendous amount of pride and honor. Kobe even stated himself that he was nearly as big of a fan as Larry Bird as he was of Jordan, even despite the rivalry. In his own words, Bryant's reverence towards Bird might come as a surprise to some, given the Lakers-Celtics rivalry, but Bryant says he studied Bird just as he did Magic and Jordan. Bryant says, you have no idea how much I've studied this guy. Another reason why Kobe could have gone to the Celtics is Red Arbach himself. While many saw drafting Kobe as a risk, why would that have been an issue for the Celtics? As ESPN puts, What's risk to Red Arbach? He drafts the NBA first African American player, was the first coach to start five black players, the first to hire a black coach, he punched an opposing team's owner in the mouth on the court in a squabble over a referee's call. Boldness was no concern for him. Unfortunately, Red Arbach was not there for Kobe's workout nor interview, and ultimately said that the decision was up to Carr who ended up not picking Kobe, only to later regret it, not even moments later, stating, we all looked at each other, and we knew that there was a possibility that Kobe would come back and haunt us. We knew that even then. Now for the what if section. Obviously for this, it is based on a lot of hypotheticals, so there are gonna be some hot takes here but we can try our best to imagine what the circumstances would be like. With that being said, again, some of these things will seem like a bit of a reach, but hey, that's where the fun is, right? So let's assume that Boston drafts Kobe at sixth. Antoine Walker would almost certainly be picked by the Clippers being a part of the so-called Super Six in the 1996 draft. The Clippers would have had a much better record and a better chance than previously. Let's assume they win a few more games and they overtake the Suns for their spot in the playoffs. They may have enough to overtake the Supersonics where the Suns failed, but still not enough to defeat the Rockets afterward. With Kobe taking a few years to develop, the Lakers would remain relatively unchanged for at least these first few years. Even with Antoine Walker, the Celtics also only won 15 games, so even if their wins dropped to only 10, they would still be last in the division either way. So let's keep things simple and assume that the draft lottery went the same way as it did and the Spurs still got Tim Duncan. The biggest question is do the Celtics still take Chauncey Billups then? I believe yes, but for a separate reason. Rather than pairing a guard with a forward like Walker, instead the Celtics may try and create a good backcourt with Kobe and Billups. However, due to this, I don't think they would later select Paul Pierce as this is around the time that Kobe really started to shine. If Chauncey and Kobe did well, that means that Chauncey is less likely to be traded, meaning he doesn't go to help the Pistons win the 2004 championship. As for the Lakers, the Lakers would need to find another guard. 
we can assume that they would most likely try to trade up in the draft for another guard or make a trade for another guard. There isn't really any way to determine what pick or trade they would do or what player they would select. But needless to say, it would be far less superior than the Kobe Shaq duo that we are used to. Kobe really didn't take off until the 2000 to 2001 season, so let's assume the playoffs and everything play out the same until 2001 to 2002. I actually think that the Celtics would do worse these seasons having just Kobe and Billups rather than the unit of Paul Pierce and Walker. They would drop down to around the Pacers were, and the Pacers would prevail since they already had better stats in the playoffs against the original 2002 Celtics anyway. This means that the Celtics would either miss the playoffs or be the 8th seed while the Pacers were the 7th seed rather than the 8th seed and everyone else would move up one seed. Considering the Pacers lost this playoffs anyway, it probably wouldn't affect much. However, for the Lakers, this would mean that they would not have Kobe and Shaq together these years, leading to possibly Reggie Miller, Allen Iverson, and Jason Kidd all having a ring before 2005 meaning the Lakers would have three less championships by this point as well. However, with this loss in the playoffs, the Celtics could make some trades. Considering they were hesitant to pick Kobe anyway, they could trade him away which would end this what if for the Celtics. Or they could trade Billups similar to what they did anyway. For the sake of keeping the video going, let's say the Celtics trade Billups and keep Kobe since he was averaging over 20 points, and they knew that Kobe would blossom eventually already. Now that he's averaging over 20, they know he needs maybe one more year to be elite. Kobe, Kobe was averaging 30 going into 2003 to 2004. However, he has no duo now. With just him compared to Walker and Pierce, the Celtics would likely end around the same spot this season. Considering Kobe won two championships without Shaq and was averaging 35 and 31 going into the 2005 and 2006 season, in 2005 we could have seen a Celtics vs Spurs finals with Kobe vs Tim Duncan. With the big three having some of the best winning percentages out of anyone though, I would still personally take the Spurs. Going into 2006, I think that Kobe would have enough to jump the Celtics in standings to around where the Nets were meaning that they would have to ironically face the Shaq Heat in the playoffs. If Kobe did have enough to beat Shaq and D-Wade, that adds a chip to Kobe and a ring away from D-Wade and Shaq. Assuming a similar thing the next season, the Celtics could then make it to the playoffs, and we would have a Kobe Celtics versus LeBron Cavs in the playoffs, which could go either way. Regardless, the 2007 Spurs would still win the championship over either one. With the playoff loss, let's assume that the Celtics still try to trade for Kevin Garnett. Kobe now has an elite big, while not as strong or record breaking as Shaq, it still adds a lot to the team. Now this is probably where I make one of my biggest reaches. Let's assume that the Ray Allen trade does not go through because the Celtics now already have Kobe and Garnett. The question is, would the Supersonics still last instead of moving to OKC if they had a combination of Ray Allen, Westbrook, and KD? With Kevin Garnett and Kobe, the Celtics could go on to win multiple chips. The biggest teams that stopped the Celtics during these years originally was the Lakers, but they don't have Kobe anymore, meaning that Kobe could have a similar three-peat with Kevin Garnett in Boston for 2008, 2009, and 2010, the years he had already won a chip without Shaq anyway, besides 2008 where Celtics had already won. This takes two championships away from the Lakers. Dirk would probably still likely take the 2011 chip, and the 2012 to 2015 champs would remain the same and consistent with the Heat and Spurs Big 3 until Kobe retired. With all that said, this leaves the Celtics with 20 championships total, assuming that a similar path is taken to win the 2024 championship, while the Lakers lose out on all 5 of Kobe's championships resulting in only 12, giving the Celtics a significant lead in championships. However, for Kobe, this means that he would only have 3 rings compared to 5. Now, that was a lot of hypothetical and hot takes about how many championships everyone would win. But what about off-court or adverse effects? Of course, one of the biggest impacts would be Shaq and Kobe's relationship. There's no way to know what it would really be like, 
but it would certainly be different, which would likely affect Shaq's take on his shows, if he even got on those shows without his rings. Of course, that means that he can't make jokes to Charles Barkley about rings if he did. Of course, that also means that he would have less of a relationship with Paul Gasol as well, which would be, be very upsetting considering that Gasol is basically his brother and an uncle to his kids. Biggest of all, Mamba mentality could have been changed entirely. Kobe said that he researched Bill Russell and would also embrace the Celtics culture if he was there. That means that it would lead to more team play rather than Kobe ball possessive plays. It would have been interesting to see how the Celtics team culture either clashed or mixed with Mamba mentality and which mentality prevailed to create an all new sense of Kobe. The rivalry itself definitely would have been very interesting. To quote a Lakers fan on a basketball messaging board, he said, As a Lakers fan, the notion of Kobe playing with the Celtics is an absolute abhorred one that would cause me to tear my eyes out and remove everything green from my household. If it happened in real life though, I'd probably hate Kobe with a virulence that dwarfs anything that I could imagine hating Paul Pierce and his wheelchair for. He definitely would have played for the Celtics and played for them with pride. If Paul Pierce, who grew up on only a stone's throw away from great Western form, played all those years for the Celtics, then Kobe would as well. With all that said, while it means more championships for the Celtics and they can ponder what they lost for as long as they want, I think the league, the fans, and Kobe himself all got the best outcome with him going to the Lakers, creating more iconic moments, friendships with Shaq and Gasol, more rings for him, and creating Mamba mentality for both the fans and inspiring other future players, and all around being entertaining. But what do you guys think? Would you guys like to have seen Kobe on another team? And what do you think of my hot take what if? Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We're on about 10k subs and I'm really trying to hit that. And as always, I'll see you all in the next video. This, this is not okay. This needs to stop now.